Hello and welcome to the fundamentals of electrical power systems for biorefineries. Today our chapter is about decentralized generation. For decentralized generation one should keep in mind that the income and the import of energy from the sun, from the wind or from whatever sources is relatively thin compared to the area where it can be used. So that means these energy sources and the conversation units have to be separated spatially from each other and that means that we have a lot of transportation from the source to the grid. And since the output is relatively small compared to the sim single units, we must keep in mind that according to the rule of thumbs, that means kilovolts is corresponding to kilometers and the kilovolts is also corresponding to the MVA, so the output power of the generating units. This means we have low voltages and we have short distances accordingly. And that means that these decentralized generation units, like this here, feed into the network levels of the medium voltage and the lower voltage level. And these nets, networks are not so well established and prepared for this new import and transportation uh, task of transporting power. There are three items that should be kept in mind when it comes to decentralized generation from today's point of view. One is the voltage stability, the second one is the system fault behavior and the third one is the short circuit behavior. Let's start with the voltage variations due to infeed of load. So once into a grid which is represented by this mesh network a power and reactive power are important through an impedance, that is the connecting impedance between the line, between the generator and the net. Then there is a voltage drop across this line, we call it delta U. And this delta U depends on, as can be seen, of the power that is transferred and the resistance. And there is another term which might be important, that is the reactive power in conjunction with the reactances of the system. So. As far as this first term is concerned, uh, it cannot be changed. We want to have power, we have resistance. On the other side, we need an electrical network, we need reactive power. So this should be supplied from somewhere and also this reactance is due to the loop impedance of the line. So the current goes forth and back and that is a loop and a loop is a reactance. So, now if the reactive power that is always necessary to carry out the transportation and transformation of electrical power from one system voltage level to another one uh, is not provided by the distributed sources, it must be provided somewhere else. But if you provide the reactive power from the distributed generation, then there is always a voltage increase at the end at the infeed point. And if, for example, some other consumers of the network are connected to this point, they will experience a voltage rise which may be detrimental to their equipment. So therefore this is an unwanted thing. One could, of course, try to make the reactive power not positive but negative, which is technically positive, but then the problem of generating reactive power is transferred to some other units and it is not yet clear what is the best position or the best way to generate this necessary positive reactive power. The second aspect I would like to talk to you about is the system recovery after short circuit. Short circuits, that means a loss of insulation here or there at the grid at any voltage level, causes a voltage collapse at the point of fault. So before the po point, before all this fault, we have the normal voltage boundary. After that, the voltage decreases and will be tripped. And now let's see what happens to the real world network voltage after a fault has been cleared. So once a fault is cleared, one would expect that the voltage recovers to its original value, but it does not because many motors that have been installed in the grid might stall, that means they stop, they want to recover and to restart and they take up enormous amount of current and it can happen that these will trip out. So that first you have an overload by the motors and then you have underload, that means you have a voltage excursion into the positive side of the voltage band. And 
What is important nowadays, most of these units that fit in are inverter based. So the inverter chops the current and aligns the current slots to the voltage. But if there is no voltage, then these inverters have difficulties in getting the right current at the right time slot and they may trip out. And that will mean that after a short circuit, once this has been cleared, the voltage will not go up at all because there are no generating units anymore. So this is a job that will be tackled and will be solved in the next few years. But at present, it still is a problem. The third thing I would like to talk to you about is the uh, protection behavior. So far, protection is carried out in the following way. It's an overcurrent time depending protection. That means if, for example, a fault is on this line in blue, then all overcurrent relays and sensors which are energized by the short circuit current will pick up. These, these and these will not pick up, but if you have a fault here, they will pick up. And the one with the shortest time will trip first. So after one second, the fault is cleared and the other one, the other protection unit has not cleared. So that means the network will be energized up to this bus bar, but downstream we have lost everything. The principle is that the grading, the time grading takes increases from the last point of the grid to the source. When, on contrast, one changes the in-feed so that the, another source is at the end of the grid, then one would need exactly the reverse order of timing. So now these protection times are graded just in the opposite way and that may cause problems. The solution is given in the last and last slide. That means you must have bidirectional protection. So that means the protection will see which current comes from which side. For example, take now a fault again at the same point. The current that goes from this transformer to the fault point energizes and will trip this unit because it sees the current in the forward direction. This 1.5 second will pick up but not trip because it would be later than the other one that has already tripped. And now let's see what happens to the current that comes from this generator. From this generator, this 0.5 second protection will come first because it has two properties to make a trip. It has a short time and it has the right direction into the grid. So that means this trips first before these pick up. That is a technical sound solution which is possible, but it means nowadays that all the protection which was carried out like this has to be redesigned and that new protection has to be built in and to be tested and so on. But this is possible and it makes things just a little bit more complicated. So this was the lecture about the decentralized power generation. If you have questions for further details and would like to deepen your understanding, please have a look at the script. Thank you very much.